Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. You know, they they don't write books like they did in the 70s. If there's anything I've learned about literature from the 1970s, it was a time. <laughs> it was a time. And let's talk about Salman Rushdie's debut novel, Grimus. Grimus was written in 1970. Five. And not many people read this. Rushdie himself doesn't really rate this at all. And to think that Midnight Children would be his follow-up novel after reading this is somewhat of an astounding feat. Because this thing is a mythological sci-fi... I don't know what this was. This was... Wild. Grimus is deceptive as it is unreadable. <laughs> Grimus is unlike anything he has written and I'm I'm so proud. I think we had a win, to be honest, when Rushdie decided, let's not do that. However, there are breadcrumbs. There is talk about religion. There is talk about history and culture, literary references that make their way through Grimus, which would become the foundation of what Rushdie would continue to write throughout the majority of his books. Some of you who have been here for a long time might go, well, how does it compare to The Golden House? We don't talk about The Golden House. Now that we've got that out of the way, what is Grimus about? Grimus is Rushdie's retelling about the 12th century Sufi poem, The Conference of Birds. And that is as far as I am willing to talk about that because I have not read The Conference of Birds and I don't know if Rushdie is doing a good job. I'm not entirely sure what Rushdie was doing through the majority of this because this is wild. This is, I cannot, I can't, I cannot stress how different this is to any of Rushdie's works. We're all used to one of his characters being Indian. And this character is Indian, a Native American. Why? Why is Flappin' Eagle a Native American? Why does she drink a potion on like the 12th page that gives her eternal life because because of reasons her sister gives and then the sister goes off and, and then flapping eagle falls in love and then that goes pete tong and then then gets in a yacht sails out decides to hang herself and through doing that transports across dimensions to to calf island which used to be calf Island, which is an Arabic letter that has calf has meaning, which I think Rushdie spoke about. They are so I I cannot tell you how absolutely this is a bombardment of Rushdie's imagination. I I really couldn't follow this. I really couldn't follow it. Like how Calf Island was subsequently bastardized by these immortal dwellers to make it easier and more understandable for them by taking up the English word. So has Grimus has been bastardized because if you change the vowels and then turn it backwards you get Simurg who is a Persian mythological creature somewhat akin to the phoenix and Grimus here has all the answers. Everything that Flapping Eagle thinks that they are doing in order to progress the story, in order to find their sister. Grimus has all the answers. Grimus is all knowing. Any of the tricks and turns the Rushdie throws, Grimus already knew that was going to happen until like the last three pages. They don't write books like they did in the 70s. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep falling back on that. This book is unhinged. You know what? It wasn't even hinged. I don't think it has a door. This was bonkers. This was this was absolutely bizarre. It was it was just bizarre. In a good way, in a bad way. You know what? I don't know. It was off the chart weird. Like 
none of it made sense. I think that was the point. Reading a Rushdie work is not something that you could do lightheartedly. They are dense, they are difficult, and his prose work is rich. Grimus just takes all of that, scrumples it up, and then just screams, but what if we're in a different dimension? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I, I truly cannot tell you how lost I was with half of this. As soon as we like hung ourselves in the middle of the ocean and then swapped dimensions. This is like 40 pages in, by the way. If you think this is like a long, like all of this happened in like 40 pages. This is over 300. If you're looking for a book to struggle with and just generally have a bad time with, or you're a rusty aficionado and are like, maybe I'll read Grimer's, then you should read Grimer's. They don't write books like they do in the 70s. And I'm giving it a two. I'm giving it a two. We're putting it in the Testaments Club. <laughs> because when it was good, it was good. But most of it... <laughs> most of it was... I, I just shrugged. I just kind of have to shrug and go, Oh, Rushdie. Oh, you silly thing. And then, he, oh, how did this guy write Midnight's Children? It doesn't even read like the same author.